So today I'm going to show you what it actually takes to make money doing niches. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about niches and research. What it honestly actually takes to be able to research and find the information that you need. It takes more than just a couple minutes to understand a niche. You're going to invest hours of your time. You're going to have to invest hundreds and hundreds of dollars in some areas to understand and learn them, to be able to value items and date them correctly. This is a $5 purchase here, and we're going to do a quick research on this. We're going to show you what it takes me, the steps in the whole works, to understand and value these items. So I've got some buttons here. I just wanted to give an example on the amount of research it's gonna to take to figure some stuff out. Now, just because you have some books and some basic knowledge doesn't mean you're instantly just gonna know what everything is out there when you're looking stuff up. Now, this button right here um, is in a book, and I've seen this one before. Never had a big bunch of them, but this is the book that I'm going to look through, Record of American Uniform and Historical Buttons. This is by Alpheus Albert. Um, this is the Bible of these, these types of things here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of research to figure this out. So let's see here. Um, in fact, here it is. We've got it in this book. It's the same exact button here. Now, there's two basic versions. They look almost identical, and I think I have one of each, yes. So this one has a C in the center for a cadet. This is Boston School Cadet, and this is with an R. It's Boston School Regiment, and they're going to be right up here. You've got Boston School Cadet, Staff Officer, Boston School Regiment. Now, it doesn't have a date in this book. It doesn't have any other information. So we're going to have to do a quick search on the internet. Now there's some dating information on here on some items related to it that date back to 1873. One of them is this piece of sheet music here. Same thing here, you can see the actual sheet music here. It is from the Boston School Regiment. Now I could go a little further if I need to, but the value isn't there to invest a whole bunch more time into this. Now I could look up who Colonel Dunton is and get some more information. It will say probably where he taught and the whole works. He was probably the person in charge of this actual school regiment. So we can at least say that this button is from 1873 or before. Now I can also come back here and it's got a image right here. And so this is the image that it's showing here for officers of the Boston School Regiment. So this is the one with the R on it. So this is actually from the Massachusetts collection here. They've got photos, archives, things along that line here that you can use and research. So just FYI. So you can zoom in and take a much better look at these and you can see the actual images itself. So these are the uniforms that had these buttons on them. You can see there was quite a few of them, but it's obvious 100% that these are where you would find the buttons at back in the day. And this photo is from 1899. Now obviously if you had the original one, you'd really be able to tie this down, but these are officers. These are uh, basically kids in a school and they had a regiment there probably similar to like maybe a JROTC and ROTC or something like that or almost a National Guard to some extent I would imagine groups like this would have fought in the Civil War believe it or not so I can track it down and know that this at least was founded in the 1870s maybe even earlier than that there's not much other information I can find on it now, one other thing that you got to know is on the back of this is a back mark. And the back mark is very specific. You can date those. There's actually books on back marks. So just because the button itself design anyway would go back to the 1870s or before it doesn't mean this button was made then it could have been made in the 1920s only way to tell is to research what's on the back of the button so there's a little more to doing basic research than just hey this is what it is i'm done i mean a lot of people misidentify misdate um all kinds of things in there now this book has various copies of what should be written on the back and dating on when that back design was used. And sometimes it's a very long gap. It could have been used for 60, 70 years or more. 
goes over quite a few companies. We're looking for a very specific one. Waterberry should be in here, and here is Waterberry. So we can look at the, fa uh, the back of this here. It's got one dot. So we can date the button from that same time frame because this is the exact same button back mark. This design was made from 1870 till 1900. So I, I can easily date it from that time frame. So this is pretty much what the date would be. Now, obviously, if this school stopped being a school in 1879, it only has a nine-year uh, gap that this could actually be made. So in some cases, you can narrow it down uh, that way. All the backs on these are different. Um, so even if the faces have the exact same thing on them, uh, in fact, this one's another R, here's a C. So even if the faces are the same, the backs could be, uh, you know, date them from a different time frame. So you can't just put... Uh, ballpark figure. You can't list these like as four of the same buttons because the backs are all different. So I mean there's more to doing research than just again typing something in. You can't even begin to know what's written on the buttons without knowing where to find a, a guide for it. And again this is a guide for something like that. It's hard to look and use Chrome even for something like this to reverse look up or anything else like that. A lot of these sorts there's so few that are listed that you're not going to be able to track them down by you know the basic methods like that. Now sometimes I'll have to get yet another book out because this book here, some of the information is dated. It wasn't correct and it was corrected at a later place. Um, so this book here, and this is a fairly expensive book. It's been out of print for a while. I wanna say it's like 200 bucks or better. Um, this book here is like 40. This book here can run anywhere from say 60 to 100. And these are just a couple of the books I have. So research wise, you've really got to invest if you wanna know a niche. This is the only way I would ever know this niche or be able to do anything with it. And here's another example here, late 1800s. So the back mark we just showed you doesn't go up to 1900 like the other book says. Now, how would they know that? This book actually goes into details on how they track this information down. Some of it's by order records, literally from the U.S. government. When they ordered from the Waterbury Button Company, they stated basically what was written on it. They gave a description of how it would look before it was done. So you're literally going to have typed out the exact wording on some of the buttons here in government records and things like that. It'll say how many were purchased, what uniform they would have been purchased for, like um, Massachusetts Volunteer or something like that. So that's all going to be different. Every time someone finds some more information, they update it and somebody puts out a new book. So you're going to find, let's see if I can get you a couple more pages, lots of information on early buttons, um, the designs, and the whole works. Now, even in that case, sometimes you're going to run into where you're looking at stuff and the faces of the buttons will be identical, but the back's going to be different. Far too many people will just look at the information on the faces of something. Now, this goes for anything. There's trade card books, comic book price guides, and the whole works. Sometimes there's reprints and things like that. The original Star Wars comic books from the 70s were reprinted. There is a price difference, so you can usually tell the difference. There's newsstand versions. W with anything, any collectibles that I go into... I've got to have the basic knowledge, and if I don't have the basic knowledge, I've got to be able to find it and know where to research the basics. Without knowing all the information and understanding what's written in this book here, you'd be lost. You'd be mispricing things. You'd be missing things. Um, so you've got to take it at heart. You can't just say, well, I'm going to do a niche and everything's going to be fine because I've spent hours upon hours. Again, I love doing this. I love the history. I love the rarity, the scarcity on these sorts of items. So I don't have a problem spending hours of my time digging into this. The more I know, the more I make. So the goal is to know more than the other folks, to at least comprehend and know how to tell the difference between valuable items that look the same and cheapo items that aren't worth anything. And, and again, it's going to take you time, money, and energy. Far too many people just blow that off and think that it's just about looking everything up online. If you just looked up half the stuff that I sell without knowing at least a little bit more on it, you're not going to do super, super well. This is Warren K. Tice's book. Um, excellent book. He's got a southern one for specifics. 
Albert has a book on uh, colonials like George Washington as well. I think he's got two or three different books like this. There's a couple other books for dig sites where you can see some early varieties and variants. All of this is what it takes for me to be able to track stuff down. And not only that, I've got button books for all sorts of other things because there's no other way on earth to tell the difference. If you didn't have all of these books, and these books are long out of print, these top three books probably would cost you around six, seven hundred dollars to get because they're so far out of print. And yet there's more books that I have that go into more detail. Um, and I still yet have some other books as well. I've got more than this. I've got online references. There's, it's not just something anybody can do. Um, if you're willing to take the risk and invest your time and your money into actually doing the research and spending the time, you know, knowing that at some point, hopefully this will pay off, you can make a lot of money doing niches. You're going to know more than all the folks around where you're buying from. And hence, you're going to know the good stuff from the bad stuff. You'll be able to buy just the good stuff. You'll be able to make the best money that way. You'll be able to advance your business. But again, it's going to take money. It's going to take time. It, this isn't some small endeavor. I've been into the sort of things that I sell for, geez, some of the items like buttons for 25 plus years, comic books, 35, 40 years. I've been into comic books since I was a child, toys, action figures. I've been in forever. I worked at a movie theater, so I know movie uh, uh, memorabilia, posters, lobby cards, stills, strips of film from the actual movie um you name it if it's movie related i've dealt with it had it advertised for it sold it bought it that goes for so many items that i'm into even magazines or geez the trade cards postcards i've been dealing with for 10 years i've got price guides and you know identification guides and artists and things like that with almost everything that i, I sell to some extent um silver and gold buying i've got hallmark books show all the touch marks and stuff like that it's taken us years just to get the books and sometimes i didn't even know a book existed until uh, i talked to somebody in in one of the groups that we're in or something so a lot of this stuff is word of mouth people aren't you know there isn't a, a big source of hey this is where you get all this information from so anyway take it at heart if you want to do a specialty item niches in see the the benefit of it you're going to have to invest a lot of time and money there is no other way i know a lot about this topic here and a bunch of other topics but without these books i would no way be successful doing it and and that's part of the key to this knowing the right tools that will help you advance your business well there we have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Precision engineered permanent accessory made by Whammo for bikes like Stingray, Wildcat, and Spider. It's made out of hardened chrome plated steel to take a real beating when you do a wheelie or lay a strip of rubber like this. But Wheelie Bar isn't just for dragging, it's for exhibition riding too. So see who can do the most tricks. See who can go the farthest. See who can have the most fun. Remember, you can't do a real wheelie without a wheelie bar. And only Whammo makes wheelie bars. More fun from Whammo. So go with the big ones with wheelie bars. Sold wherever bikes are sold. <laughs>